Hey friends, we are outside today and I'm excited to talk to you about my little fruit trees. You see a couple of them here. I've been growing them using the grow a little fruit tree method. I've just been really wanting to share this with you. I got this book off of Amazon called Grow a Little Fruit Tree and it is by Ann Ralph. I'm really excited to grow trees using this method. The whole idea of this book is to grow smaller fruit trees that are easier to manage, they take up less space, they produce a little bit less fruit, and they keep you on the ground. So a gal in a local gardening Facebook group shared this book with us and I thought immediately that it was like the right way to go. This book, if you're interested in keeping small trees, it will teach you how to prune them and the general care and maintenance of fruit trees. It says it's for simple pruning techniques for small space and easy harvest fruit trees. If you're interested in learning more about the book, I'll link it below in the description. These trees are kind of like my special project. It's going to be mostly me just managing them. So why I thought that this method was really awesome for us was because of height. Now we're not going to have to pull out a ladder to do pruning. We're not going to have like a terrible abundance of fruit that we need to figure out what to do with. I found for me that I'm not great at say like meeting people to sell stuff or anything like that. So I don't want an overabundance of fruit that goes to waste. We'll feed what we don't use to our animals and stuff and give some away maybe to friends and family. But overall, we don't need a big tree to produce for us market level amounts of produce. <laughs> the other reason is that here in the high desert, we are above zone five and our last frost goes into June. And that is really tough for fruit trees, especially with stone fruit trees. They like to bloom a little bit earlier in the spring, like peaches and nectarines. The whole idea that I had was that I'll be able to put those old fashioned Christmas lights and cover with frost cloth in order to protect the susceptible blooms from freezing with our late frosts. And of course I can't do that if the tree gets really huge. And I'm really excited about this, so, so don't poo poo it, okay? I'm still learning. This is my second season with these trees. We planted them last spring. They're all still kicking. And so I have really high hopes for this method. And I'm really excited to share, you know, my process of learning this method and <laughs> if it works and if my trees die and, and, and hopefully my whole idea of being able to protect these trees from frost will work out and I will get peaches. <laughs> hopefully in an area that's not super likely. What we're doing here today is we are going to prune, do our winter pruning, and hopefully I'll be able to share with you my thought process and how it's going. I don't know, but it's very cold, so let's get on with it. <laughs> So we're here at my first tree, which is one of my peaches. I bought trees that were meant for my zone. However, zones don't tell you exactly when your last frost is. So be sure and learn when your last frost date is like the most important thing when it comes to like all gardening stuff. I have a video about it and I'll link to it probably in the description. Here is the tree we're going to be considering today and holy cannolis, has it ever grown since being planted last spring 2020. Some plans that we are going to do today it looks like all these lower branches died. I was kind of hoping they might produce more, but I'm going to take them off. So the branch that I actually thought would be the third structural branch here, it doesn't look like it lived. I'm going to leave it just in case, but I'm going to remove all of these bottom branches because they do look dead to me. And I'm just going to deal with what I have going on up here. We want to prune the tree in a way that it is open in the center, kind of like a donut <laughs> when they talk about it I think of a donut um so that you know it gets air and sunlight in the center then we're going to consider these branches the book says that this stuff is not rocket science that they're relatively forgiving these fruit trees peaches grow very quickly and hopefully the decisions I make today will not super negatively affect my trees I got this tree online and so I didn't actually get to pick what it looked like it came to me as a very thick little tree this method is best done on tiny little whips little bare root super like pinky thin or thinner trees but i caught this tree late in the season and i just couldn't wait because the best time to plant fruit trees is now of course we're just really gonna do our best here and we're gonna do a lot of feeling based pruning which sounds it sounds a little ridiculous but in the book it says to really just use your best judgment and your judgment is good judgment they also say that horizontal 
horizontal branches are the best sort of branches for fruit production. So just looking at the tree now, I'm going to leave for sure this branch here because maybe it can be that third structural branch. I'm going to leave most of this branch and trim it to a bud that faces in the direction in which I want the tree to continue to grow. And I think, you know, maybe like this bud here might be a good choice. And I'm honestly not 100% sure what to do with everything. And if you read this book, there's at this point, there's not a ton of guidance on what you should and shouldn't do. Of course, there are other sources online to help you make decisions. And this morning I reread portions of the book and I asked some friends in a Facebook group what they thought and they gave a little bit of guidance but I couldn't wait any longer and I really just wanted to do this with you guys. Doing this will give me a learning opportunity. It will give you a learning opportunity and we'll be able to track the progress together as the season goes forward. In the book it goes through a ton of different ways that you can manage your trees and plant them in different ways. What The way that I'm going for here is to create sort of a fruit tree hedge. A reason I'm wanting to do that is to create a windbreak for my backyard. I'll also, it will be sort of like a, a bee barrier. <laughs> I have a little pond in my backyard and the honeybees, they use that for their water source. I found that I often walk into their bee line, their flight path, and I get hit in the head with a bee. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't been stung yet because one flew at my mouth once. I'm so thankful my mouth was closed. But Aside the point, uh, the whole idea is that I'm going to keep these trees, uh, I don't know, however high I can reach, which is probably, I don't know, how tall is that? I'm 5'4", I don't know. I'm going to try to keep it between like 6 and 7 feet. So we're going to take these down because these branches just aren't going to help me anymore. They're just at the wrong spot and they're just not going to give me what I need. I'm going to leave these two branches down here just in case they decide to kick back. I'm kind of one of those people who like to leave my options open for just in case, right? When we're looking here, what I'm thinking is this is all a bit crazy. I really, if this is going to continue, I feel like this is just going in the wrong direction. I'm going to trim this branch down to here and here it's a little bud and when you clip them you kind of want to clip it close and make sure it's at a 45 degree angle. That's going to encourage this particular branch to start growing you know this way when I cut it off and I'm terribly nervous okay this this like my heart is racing I feel terrible for cutting these trees but I really feel deep down that this method is going to be really amazing for me. <laughs> I, I kind of am conservative because I feel like I can always trim more, but I can't trim less. Yeah, I think maybe not that one. I think maybe I'll go to this. I'll make this snip. I'm committed about 45 degrees and you see it's just a little bit above the bud there. And do know that stone fruit branches and leaves are a little bit poisonous to animals. So make sure that your animals don't really get it. Peach trees and nectarine, the, the wood is a little bit toxic. So I made that cut. <laughs> I'm so stressed out right now. One thing I may have to consider uh, somewhat maybe this year is weighing down the branches and making sure they go a little bit more horizontal. Since horizontal branches are more fruit producing than vertical branches. Oh, this is so stressful. But this tree is gonna grow like crazy. Peaches grow like crazy. Another big prune time is going to be just after the summer solstice and that's going to help me distinguish stuff even further so at least I know now that I'll have another choice later this year. I'm feeling a little bit stressed about this branch <laughs> so I think I'll cut because they say that winter pruning uh, creates vigorous growth and summer pruning the growth is less vigorous so I'm just I'm I think I'm gonna cut this off <laughs> because I, I feel like this branch is a good branch, but I really don't, I really don't know to be honest. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit conservative here and put it up to this one again. Always about 45 degree angle to the branch and ouch and voila! I did that and it feels wrong, but it happened. Okay, I, I did it. So I figured, I figured the same for this one too. Um, this branch is a bit more horizontal. I'm going to remove this one. Uh, the downward angle is making me very uncomfortable and like it's not going to be a strong branch for this tree. So 
There we go. Decisions. Decisions are being made and it's stressful. As I said, I'm going to leave this one. We want to remove these ones here. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's right in between. So this one's like one of those straight up branches that was recommended that I remove. So I'm going to remove that. And you know what? I just feel like this branch shouldn't be here. I'm going to take it off to here. We are making good decisions, right? That's what the book says. <laughs> and this branch too, uh, with its downward angle, I don't like that. We're removing stuff from the center. So we, cause we want an open center. And this branch is somewhat repetitive to this branch. So I'm gonna remove that too. And here's a little twig that died. We'll take that off. And this is a center one. We'll take that off. And now I know this one's kind of a center one, but I'm, I really kind of want it to just grow that way. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure what to think about all these. <laughs> So I think I'll just take them about halfway and hope for the best. I saw that these little branches, you can't really see, I'm sorry, but they have this little, it looks like it died a little bit. So I'm just going to like trim them down, make sure I trim to a bud that faces outward and cross my fingers. That's a lot of what this is, is a lot of finger crossing. <laughs> Where would I like this branch to go? This one faces outward. This one kind of faces outward. I mean, if I just, if I end up keeping it, I can take this off anytime. So I think I'll go conservative do about halfway there. I'm gonna repeat that for these, the rest of these branches and also these really long ones. Always making sure that the bud faces out, out from the center of the tree. Mm -mm. Eventually, these two would grow together, so I think I'm actually just going to remove that one. No, I'll just do the half thing and see what it does. No, I'll remove it. No, oh, I don't know, guys. No, I'll remove it. Okay, doing it. Okay, that one's off. Now, these two are kind of repetitive, but I just don't know what to do about it. I think I'll just leave it for now. I can I can take it off later. So this is one of them with a little bit of a dead end. And so that kind of makes me feel like it, it pruned itself. So I'm just going to clip it a little farther back, about halfway, and hopefully it's not like fire blight or something. That's a new thing that I'm learning about, but apparently it's really bad. So we'll do that. We'll do that to these as well. This feels so wrong, guys. This one, I feel like that's a good one. Okay, and then this one as well think here okay <laughs> we all have to start learning how to do these things you know by experimenting and hoping for the best <laughs> I figure if it really hurts the tree in the long run I can plant a new tree <laughs> So this is what this looks like now. I need to make more decisions about these branches here. I figure I'll leave them and I'll refer to some others and see what they say. Here's what it looks like from above. I'm really disappointed that that branch and that branch seem to be dead. I'm kind of hoping that they're not, but we'll see. It's not the best to have two, but that's all it gave me. This tree was quite old for a bare root tree. And actually I'm surprised that it survived so far. It looks so wimpy, but the book says that it will grow back very vigorously. I have a lot of considerations to make here. <laughs> and I'm not sure what to do. We'll find out and we'll, we'll revisit that at a later date. So this is the nectarine tree and we have got ourselves a pretty funny looking baby here. <laughs> I really didn't know what to do. This bottom branch was so nice. I didn't want to remove it last year, but I actually think, I think I will this year. I don't think I want the structure of my little tree to be that low to the ground. And that's a really big decision. Something else that's weird is that <laughs> I was like, no branches in the back. So when I do my pruning today, I, I will hopefully find, <laughs> figure out I don't know, but things will be happening. But I'm definitely cutting off that big front. That's not gonna work. And we'll make some new considerations in this area of the little tree. So let's, let's make that hard cut because it's a big deal and it's scary. I just don't feel like it's gonna be best for this tree. So there we go. That feels a lot better actually. And now, now I can make some new decisions for this tree. When you first plant these bare root trees, you make a really 
hard cut to make. I mean, the first cut with the grow little fruit tree method is probably like the scariest thing you'll ever do because you're basically just chopping the tree, baby tree, and it feels wrong. It feels very wrong, but so far so good. And you cut it at some spot where you see from above that you have three branch, three to four branches that are kind of equidistant. And in this tree, it looks, it looks a little hard to decide, but I don't mind the height here. Obviously that's where I cut it last year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these two lower ones. They're not going to give me what I need. I don't want to change the height, so let's get rid of those. Things happen. Now, we're looking at these branches. The decisions are so hard. But these three up here are pretty equidistant. I think those ones might be the best way to go. Now I'm looking at it and remembering there's no back branches. And if I cut this branch here in a way that it grows this way and this branch in a way that it grows a little bit more that way, I think that might even things out. So I'm going to go ahead and make that decision because this nectarine tree was only $13. <laughs> and it's not super likely to produce here, but I just had to try. I, I know you guys have probably been in that situation. <laughs> So we're just gonna, we're gonna roll with it, okay? I'm gonna cut it here because that feels better than cutting it there because that bud, I'm not sure, is actually alive. So I did it, guys. And now we're going to find a bud that faces kind of like a little bit more that way on this branch. And I think, oh, these are already bloom buds. Wow. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Okay, I'm making big decisions. All right, guys. I know it looks terrible. I know, but we are thinking long-term, 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 right? And finally, with these two last branches, I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. Read the book. I swear it will give you so much perspective. <laughs> This branch is kind of straight up. I feel like it's trying to be a central leader, which we don't want. We want trees that are open in the center. So I'm gonna cut it down to a bud that faces outward to hopefully give me more of a horizontal branch in the future. I think that's this one here. Yeah, we're just gonna do it and cross our fingers, okay? That's a lot of what we do here. Try it and cross our fingers. And I really like this branch actually, all of it, because it's pretty horizontal. Oh, I might want it more horizontal, so I think I know, this seems crazy, and it's so hard to decide, guys. <laughs> Lots of decisions being made here right now. I kind of want, it feels wrong, but it feels right. I'm cutting it here. Okay, it's done, I did it. I know it looks terrible, but they grow so fast. Stone fruit grow so fast. That's, they reiterated that in the book many times. <laughs> And so, fingers crossed, everything goes okay. This is a huge difference, obviously. Golly, guys. <laughs> so, I made big decisions with this little tree. And I hope they were right decisions, but they grow fast. If it survives through the rest of this winter, it will be pretty amazing. I trimmed it in a way that I was hoping that more branches would grow that way and this branch would uh, grow back this way. I don't know if that was the right way to go. I may end up cutting off this bottom branch altogether because these three are actually pretty equidistant. I ended up trimming that top one in a way that the bud was facing outward so it would be more horizontal and then this one a little bit as well for the same reason we'll see how it goes wish it the very best coming soon will be me trying to figure out what the heck to do with this tree which we are not using to grow a little fruit tree method on it is a what are those little tiny apples i don't know i forget it's a crab apple tree and we actually want it to be as tall as it wants to be. It produces really nice flowers for the bees. So look at how crazy it is. I'm going to be asking for <laughs> some people's opinions on this. If you have any ideas of what you would do with this crazy little crab apple tree, do let me know. I'll get a nice shot of the tree like this and you can tell me take a screenshot and I know I need to trim off branches that are crossing each other and yeah but it's just kind of overwhelming so 
do let me know how to make good decisions on this crazy tree. We'll probably make a video about it sometime. <laughs> It is so cold. Thanks so much for hanging out with me while I made these crazy decisions about my tiny little fruit trees. I'm so excited to share with you the progress of them growing. I can't wait to share with you what decisions we make and how everything grows during the season. I just, I just hope that this works out well. I have a feeling that the grow little fruit tree method is going to work out well for us. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do at home to try and keep your trees happy, healthy, and little. And it might give you some ideas of how to prune regular sized trees. If you think I'm silly and want to see how this goes for me, be sure to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> I hope that I have good news for you later. Yeah, the ducks think I'm dumb too. <laughs> and I hope to show you how it goes for the rest of the season. I know this is fruit tree stuff, but if you are interested to learn more about gardening things like learning your zone and your season length, be sure to check out the video that I post somewhere over here. Thanks for hanging out with me here on Farmstead Smith. I'll see you next time. <laughs> especially fruit trees like, uh, especially, what are those called? The pits? What are they called? I don't remember what they're called. So, especially 